My life is so much harder than yours, so how dare you act so entitled? Oh, give me a break. You're just another spoiled trust fund baby. Meanwhile, I had to grow up experiencing the poorest, saddest life ever. If you exist on the internet at all, you'll encounter criticisms like these eventually. That is a guarantee. In this video, I'm going to be brutally honest about why you should never want to go viral while I fix up my cabin in the woods. Recently, one of my videos, I wasted my 20s chasing my passions, went semi-viral, getting hundreds of thousands more views than I normally get. My husband Vincent was so excited, but I knew what was coming next. Judgment. Thousands of people are about to judge who I am and whether or not my personal experience is valid or not. This happens every single time one of my videos goes viral. It's the curse of virality no one talks about. I usually get an influx of people telling me either how much they relate to my experience or how I'm a shitty human being who's privileged and should be grateful for how great my life actually is. First of all, I want people to understand it makes me really happy my experience can help others feel less alone. But when my videos do the exact opposite for someone, I get pretty upset and confused. I accidentally triggered some kind of jealousy or resentment. These are the people who react irrationally to pretty much anything on the internet with my life is harder than yours. First of all, the end of that train of thought is a bottomless pit of misery. There's always going to be someone poorer, sadder, and with more trauma than you. So what exactly is it that they want from you before you should be allowed to share your experiences? Do I have to be someone who's lost all my limbs? Someone who grew up eating rats on the streets of a third world country? What? What is this strange trauma Olympics they're forcing everyone to participate in? My knee-jerk reaction when this happens is the desire to defend myself. I want to say, no, 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 I didn't mean to make you feel that way. But if you read between the lines, these comments actually have nothing to do with me or you or anyone else. It says everything about how they really feel about themselves. They're never going to admit it, but they're jealous. They assume that having physical things like money can somehow solve deeper internal problems. They'll think external validation, like success and status, will fix their anxieties. I went to a store and I bought some concrete anchors. Hopefully they're the right size. They were the only concrete anchors available, so... You know, look. This is what it looks like. It looks like a little douchebag. It's that thing you put in the vagina. Tampon? Tampon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see if it works. I think it might be a little too small, but um. Uh, too loose. Vagina's too big. We went on an adventure in the snow to get two anchors. So, let's see what works. Oh shit, I think this might work actually. It'll be kind of difficult to get it out if I ever need it to one day. Why would we need to get it out? Stay there forever. Unless we made a really big mistake. Man, imagine we made a really big mistake. Okay, should we try again? Let's try it again. Try the bottom board. It's hey, good. It's good. I believe. I believe. Do you believe in Jesus, Janet? No. <laughs> hey, man. It's working. I didn't actually believe. Wow. It's fucking on there. They will constantly reach for whatever it is they don't have in order to explain why their life is lacking. Ironically, while they are so busy telling others you should be grateful or you are so privileged, that is exactly the words they need to hear themselves. We are now going to pick up the TV and hang it up on that thing. Oh no. Uh -oh. Why would we need to get it out? Stay there forever. Unless we made a really big mistake. Unless we made a really big mistake. They can't seem to acknowledge that no matter where someone is in life, we are all struggling with similar anxieties. The people with all the money in the world know exactly the kind of despair that comes after realizing no amount of things are going to fix the kind of inner torture your mind can put you through. So I end up feeling bad for these people. But what prevents me from being able to feel too much empathy is knowing that there is no excuse to take out your anger on other people. If we all experience anxiety and jealousy at one time or another, why don't we all comment mean things and harass people? Why do some of us spread hate on the internet and others don't? I think for these people, they feel an extra emotion we don't get. They get some kind of satisfaction in seeing other people get what they think they deserve. And in order to feel like it's okay to treat other people badly, they give themselves weird rubrics of who is or isn't allowed to be harassed. Such as, it's okay to be cruel to someone if they're richer than you. Or, this person chooses to put themselves online, so it's fine. Some people might even convince themselves that they are the hero, saying things like, 
this bad person needs to be held accountable, and that's what I'm doing. But if you ask, what horrendous thing did the person actually do? They usually can't produce an answer. Not a genuine answer, because the real bad thing the bad person supposedly did is have opinions that hurt their feelings. Some of the people who do this might even be genuinely bad people themselves, doing criminal things to you using the internet because they can. To me, these are excuses. Cruelty is cruelty no matter how you spin it. Plenty of people are capable of disliking someone without being hateful. So now that our TV is up, what I think I'm gonna do for the next few weeks is Try to make over the hallway. The cats won't like that because I'm going to cover up their favorite hole. This is our cat's favorite hole. Hot air comes out of there because the heater is right there. They like to cuddle up to it. They'll be very sad that I'm closing it up. I'm also going to be ripping up all this carpet and installing our flooring. They won't like that, will you, my cat? We've stored a lot of our junk. A lot of stuff we don't need actually, so it's time to clear it out before ripping out all the carpet. Vincent has stored a bunch of sound foam back here with the intention of using it eventually, so I'm going to use it now. So what are we supposed to do about it? Do we change the way people interact with each other on the internet? Are we supposed to fix these people? Make it impossible for people to hurt each other online somehow by banning them off the internet? Or do we just block them, ignoring the issue? For me, I believe jealousy and envy is a fact of life. Bad people are a fact of life. There will always be people who will be cruel to you to make themselves feel better. We can try to empathize and understand them, but ultimately, we can't force these people to change. I am an INTJ personality type. If that doesn't mean anything to you, it just means it's in my personality to try to fix or address any and every problem I encounter. For example, I wanted to fix Hollywood to turn it into a better, less toxic work environment. I wanted to fix many different people in my life so that they can be the best versions of themselves. To the point where I stayed in toxic friendships, far longer than I should have. But I've come to understand how egotistical this tendency can be, even if I mean well. I can't force change on others who don't want to change. Who am I to say something is even wrong in the first place? These people might be perfectly happy in their misery and I would just be taking that away from them. I realized as I got older, it takes a certain amount of ego and narcissism to think you can and should change anyone. And it also takes a certain amount of humility to admit to yourself that you don't have that power. The only thing any of us can do is work on ourselves and our response to outside forces trying to make us as unhappy as they are. You have to get used to people who will purposefully misunderstand you and twist your words for their own gain. Or you're like me and do things to try to fix the problem. You want to make sure the bad things that have happened to you don't happen to anyone else. You want to protect people by going to the source of the problem and fixing it. By trying to fix things or change yourself, you end up being perceived as someone trying to change human nature itself. It doesn't persuade and convinces no one of anything. People will still think what they want about you and bad people will always continue to exist. Like a parent, you have to let people think what they will and trust that they will know how to protect themselves. It's unfair to take away other people's ability to make decisions for themselves and they might even resent you for it if you tried. I've also discovered a much more effective way of trying to fix the world. The one thing I know I can offer to society is to be the best artist I can be. And especially as an artist, what I do best is showing, not telling. It's usually the only way to get others to empathize with your perspective. Whereas telling someone how to think is the fastest way to alienate them. My job is to shine a light on things I feel are important and to make people feel the emotions as if they're experiencing it for themselves. If I've done a good job, People make up their own minds about what they feel about a subject. It's not my place to take that agency away from you, even if you end up disagreeing with me. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it's still hard. It's really frustrating to be misunderstood or know that people will continue to fall into the same traps as much as you try to prevent it. But I think that is the price you pay to be unapologetically yourself. That's the price in putting yourself out there into the world and saying, I deserve to exist. It's definitely easier to hide who you really are and compromise with the world, but I think those who choose to do that sacrifice a lot more than they realize. So, a lot of progress has been made. The carpet is torn out. It smells less like dirty carpet and dog smell. The hole is fixed for the most part. I need to add a few more layers of joint compound before it's seamless. Um, unfortunately, the light bulbs burnt out 
and for whatever reason the switches don't work anymore once I've replaced the light bulb. So in the next video I'm going to skim coat these walls so that they're not textured. They'll be nice and smooth and ready for paint. I don't really know what to paint in this hallway. If you have any suggestions, let me know. But lots of work left to be done. So see you next time.